gentleman. Hmm. They start from boys. So what does it take to raise a boy? <laughs> you know, most of the time we talk about the girl child and all of that. But we need to raise a guy or the girl. So one question, many answers. Uh, that's the, the scenario. Why is the act of raising boys seen as a handful or a hardship as because opposed to raising girls? Just... <laughs> you haven't seen my daughter. Oh, she's worse than... Well, actually, looking back now, I must have been just as bad as the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I have a reason. Because um, five boys came before me. So I had to do what they did. Mm. They were the only ones I had to emulate. Mm. My, my <laughs> girl is preceded by three other girls, so. Oh, she has no excuse. <laughs> she is, I don't know, even the boy is gentler. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. So, um, it was International Boy Child Day a few days ago and the questions are endless about raising the boy child. Uh, many men are talking about uh, is the need to give more attention to men now as opposed to uh, because of the way they are treating their women. Uh, so let's have conversations this morning with Amina Yusuf Ali, who is lead coach, Timeless Soul Incorporated. Thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. It's my pleasure to be here. Good morning. Do you agree with her? Why were you shaking your head <laughs> when I was talking about me coming after five boys? Oh, no, and then you were blessed with the same kind of energy that you were used to. So there's no doubt about you being able to cope. You know, they say that God will never give you more than you can handle. So he actually gave you exactly what you could handle. Oh, well, after she grew up with five boys, she yes, now has two, two boys. boys. <laughs> Management is proud of you. Very proud. <laughs> Thank you. Why is this an issue, really? Um, I think we are now realizing the loss of balance in the idea of what empowerment really means. Mm. Empowerment, whether it comes from the career-wise or home front, we are now realizing that so much Hulabalu has gone into girl child empowerment, and then the boys are now like, okay, the kind of majolo uh, mwenye sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are now finding um, that it's easier to just watch the women be all and end all and have everything, and then you come back home, and then there's nothing for you. So, what do you do? In my practice, what I see daily are um, women who are fed up with the uncreative, the lack of creative expression of boys, of their men, and the lack of drive that seems to permeate around men, like, you know, whatever would be, would be kind of idea. And um, on the flip side is that you're having boys who seem to feel like, oh, if there are two people vying for the same position, in a company just to make the quota of mm. the girl child empowerment they would rather pick the girl the lady whether or not she you know it's a, it's it could be a rumor it could be a thought an idea but it just seems like there's no point fighting the system on that side yeah. and they're just tired of trying to waddle through but don't you find the need to explain to them why they, they became such a fuss about the girl child? Because the girl child had been put down forever. She oh, was yes. the one who had to go to the kitchen. She was the one who had to sweep. Because boys don't do housework. <laughs> and all that kind of talk that we grew up with. Oh yes, I mean, there's no doubt that there was a need for the girl child empowerment to start. But at what expense should it go on right now? I think that's the major question the boys are now asking in terms of rather understanding why they have to be the second citizen. Can't we all just be citizens, so to speak, in that sense? So have we arrived at that point where we should all just be citizens? I think we've left that point a long time ago. Because as at the time that 20 years ago when we were 
overemphasizing the need for the girl Beijing. child. Yeah, the danger conference. <laughs> when we're actually advocating for the women child, uh, the, the women and the girl child to be prominent in places, we should have also paid attention to the fact that we're not just, uh, just giving birth to boy, um, girls. The boys were there and they were watching and they were feeling left behind and they were also feeling outplaced and you know misconstrued in so many reasons it's part of the things that of course sometimes it's not just about the global space it's also the home space even the feeling that you get in terms of oh the africanness of when you have a boy and everybody goes ha and the man has beaten the woman and then it's the, if it's the girl and it's like oh well try again until you have a boy yeah all it that doesn't is seem to going be like on. you've had that it's fading off we've moved past that point right now such that i mean in most homes uh, you have two boys you could have two girls and everybody's moving fine you can have that. two girls you can have four <laughs> girls and, and everybody's fine with yes. that, you know because we have the idea that you know a woman can stand on her own i know so my name is amina you know sally i say carry my papa name enter my marriage name one way or the other and it's okay as opposed to 25 years ago when that could have been misconstrued as a disrespect to my husband's family in that way like why would you want to do that you know but now we are recognizing that the reason for the boy child advocacy, and this is not also dismiss the need to still focus on girl empowerment, is basically to recognize that boys need attention just as much as girls need attention because they're still children. Perhaps one of the issues that we've had there is that, I'll go back to what she said, over focusing on the gender of the children. Yeah. You had a conference in the course of the week. Absolutely. You know, and um, how was that, by the way? Oh, it was beautiful. Okay. Still wrapping the right, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it so was beautiful. Perhaps one of the uh, challenges there is the segregation from the get go. This boy is two or three or five, and you are asking him to sleep and sit down while you are asking the girl to go do stuff. Okay, you raise the girl to be a lot more responsible and the guy to just sit down, fold his arms and read newspapers like his dad. <laughs> so my, in my family, I came, I'm the last of five children. I had um, three sisters and one brother and they can all cook the same. So I, didn't, I don't have that kind of experience that you're talking about. And maybe my mom was just a way ahead of her time. But I also have friends whose parents are kind of versatile. But you see, it's not the idea that the boys don't know what to do or don't have the life skills. It's that they watch their parents, their father particularly, just sit down. And they can't wait to say, after when I get married, that's how my that's wife That's how I'm going to be sitting. Yes, that's how my wife will be sitting down to serve me so I can relax. So it is not that the, we haven't tried to get our boys to do, to get more involved in the house chores and all that. Mm. It is also that we also haven't paid attention to their emotional and psychological needs well enough to recognize that as parents may be wounding them okay. in terms of the comparison. Oh, if um, because you are a boy, there are certain things that you are not expected to do. Cry, for instance. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to more of that in a bit, but just a quick Cry. information to uh, our viewers on DSTV that um, you will now be joining the commissioning of the new Bochi State Government House Complex at the Government House Square in Bochi State. But so of course, this program will continue on all other platforms. So please join us then, if you, if you will. So we're going to Bauchi State if you are on DSTV, but on other platforms. And if you want to join us, but you you, uh, you want to stay with us, you know, you can just go on YouTube. We're yeah, with us right there now. Now, madam, you, you, we have made you have, we have identified the errors that we've been making over the years. Mm -hmm as you know crossing lines that we shouldn't cross giving undue attention or not giving undue no. attention or perhaps even giving privileges that are undeserved mm. what have been the consequences over time and how do we begin to reassess ourselves 
So the consequences of um, in the imbalance in attention, whether it's over or under, in, as the case may be, the consequence has been we have more men who are struggling with their emotions and being able to meet other people's emotional needs. So fantastically, we'll have men who are quite um, adept in their intellectual and cognitive expressions. But when it comes to creative and emotional expressions, they may struggle a bit. They may struggle with relationship um, needs as well. Their own needs and the needs of their spouses particularly. They may okay. struggle with not being able to express their own emotions, their own with their own words, what they need and what they want from their spouses. They also struggle, they also struggle to give their children attention because again, it is meant that um, what they've seen over time is that the man is far removed from the home front, is just an observer, while the child leans towards the mother. So everything that has to do with um, behavioral challenges or behavioral upbringing, it is left with the mother to just do and say whatever it is. Because, I mean, I grew up with this um, Yoruba adage that says, um, I'm told that, yeah. Meaning that the child who is well um, brought up is actually the pride of the father. Mm. But the one that has behavioral challenges go look for the mother <laughs> in that sense. And this in itself tells us that when you look at the boy child, you are looking at how well the child has able to comport himself or compose himself when it comes to outward appearances, meeting the strategic and structural needs of the family. But very rarely the relationship and the um, intellectual, the interactions or interrelationship needs of the family because best ways to do that is to be absent mm. or to be quiet. You know, mm. I, I like to think um, of, of children as some kind of canvas. Mm. You have to paint on what you want. When you take a stump of wood, you as a sculptor only have an idea of what you want to make of it. Absolutely. But in most cases, we just tend to allow the, uh, this mold, this canvas, to just run free. We are told quite a number of ways that the, uh, the Muslim, for instance, would raise their children, that they, even there is a Yoruba proverb to the effect. We've also been told about Jews mm -hmm. or Hebrews that, look, when you get to a certain age, there are certain things that are expected of you as a boy. Yeah. Now, this is all speaking to vision, or rather visioning for the children. Do you think we have that culture? Is that a problem? Because what we have spoken about all, so far is, you know, uh, cultural influences that mm. have gone on for so long. Now, how do we begin to redress this in a way that we can say, okay, this child, if you go this way, maybe you do better, but and not allow them to just run free in any environment that they find themselves in? I think also in that sense of recognizing our culture and the influence it played in the raising up of our boys is to know that whether you're a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian, of course the, the physiological differences between having a boy and a girl is, is that you can't avoid it, right? Mm. However, it is also left for us to understand that when, as, our culture, as African culture, tells us that our men are our protectors. Protection doesn't just come from arms bearing alone. It doesn't just come from all that they're providers. It doesn't just mean that you have to bring money or provide shelter alone. It also means that protection is that you can preserve the dignity of the people that you're living with. Provision also means that you can emotionally provide connection an ambience, a space for being able to express yourself fully in that household as a man in that sense. So yes, our cultural influences affect the way we raise our boys and our girls, but it also gives us room to understand the 
changes that we are seeing as we grow, the technological advancement, the digital advancement, as well as the interactions that we're having on a larger platform, on a global scale, on how to manage the affairs between us. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that the, uh, the most important part of helping the boy child starts from the home in itself, what kind of vision, like you mentioned, the family have for their children. Are they being raised to be humanly responsible, mm -hmm. not gender, gender specifically responsible? Mm -hmm. Are we looking at helping them to be conscious of the different gender needs, but at the same time, the humanistic um, locus or loci that makes us um, connect on the platform of it doesn't matter whether you're a man or you're female. <laughs> yes, I would respect you because you're a creature, you're a creature just like me, you're a creation just like me, and you are filled with um, essence just mm. as I am. Okay, uh, there, that's there, this is. There, there's something you said earlier before we made the announcement of yeah. going to Bochy State the other time. You talked about the girls, the, the, the boys not being allowed to cry. Yeah. Essentially saying um, the. USB that they used to cry, <laughs> we come out, we remove it. The flash drive, <laughs> cry f software of crying, we remove it from them. So, how do we help children, especially the boy boys, child, stay real and true to their emotions without being tagged, quote and unquote, sissy? Hmm. <laughs> Um, it's really, it's, it, it's really challenging, but it's not impossible. Because again, the first place it starts from is removing that USB yourself, where it has told you that a boy should not cry beside you. I mean, when you walk into a room and you find two children crying, one is a boy and one is a girl, who are you most likely to comfort? You've got strength to just carry one. Who would you gravitate Even towards? Even if you had friends trying to carry two. <laughs> you know, you would most likely gravitate towards, you know, oh, yeah. why are you crying, you know? And then you are telling the boy to, ah, to be a man, it's okay, it's <laughs> enough in that sense. So we first have to reparent our mindset and that understanding we, we that, <laughs> yeah, that, it, you know, these are children. They just, they have the same emotional needs, they have the same psychological needs, they have the same attention needs from their parents just as much. And in that is also helping them to recognize that when they are using their voice, that we listen, regardless of what age or what gender that they are in in that moment. And when they are requesting attention, we notice that it is not because, oh, she's a girl that she's asking this, and it is not because it's a boy that is behaving this way. It is because they are humans in that sense. And that, that's where we can actually begin to move away from that um, emotional restriction of um, boys don't cry or big boys don't cry in that sense. <laughs> something has just come in um, and it says um, uh, it's from Undubisi Onwaha. Thanks madam for speaking up for the boy child today. <laughs> I've always seen the extreme imbalance in the one-sided push to improve the lives of girls of the, the lives of the girl child without any attention to the lives of the boys. Mm. Uh, Undubisi, that is not true. <laughs> I mean you are saying says it the mother of boys. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have, thank you very much. Um, so, but well, that is, <clears throat> so, Ndubuisi's position, by the way, from YouTube, is, mm. is, is consistent with what we have been talking about all the while. Yeah. But there are parents listening now and watching who need to do different, so yeah. to speak. So what should they be doing different? Ask your children what they need first and foremost, not on the basis of whether they are boys or girls, because if you are like, oh, because I'm a mother, I can guess what my girl child needs faster. Um, then because I'm a father, I can get what my son needs faster. No, it's about taking away the, the blueprint you grew up with for just for a minute and pay attention to what is available right now and ask them what exactly 
what have I been doing that you like? I always say lead with three questions. What have I been doing that you like? What have I been doing that you struggle with because of how I share it with you? And in what areas do you think I can improve on? Those three questions on the basis of them being children, not them being boys or girls, actually gives them that opportunity to say, you know what, sometimes, I mean, I've, I've, I've found a 17 year old who says, you know what, he's talking to his, his 20 year old sister that, you know, I'm the dowager of this family, so you still have to respect me at the yes. end of the day, you know. Yes. But the point then is, who gave him that idea? Where did that come from? Well. Perhaps from the parents or perhaps from what, even the grandparents sometimes, you know, in how they share some of the stories in the family. Mm. Well, it all boils down back to teach them what it means to be human. Mm. Teach them what it means to relate with one another on the basis of respect. Then we cannot begin to talk about the gender differences and whatnot. In my generation, there's somebody that I play tennis with and I am one month, exactly <laughs> four weeks older than he is. And every time I call him my aburo, him and all his friends, in the village, when we talk, you cannot talk. You may be older, oh, that, but, but yeah, you cannot girl. talk. But the difference between them, <laughs> the, the, the difference then is you weren't in the village at the time. That well, probably at some. Well, they still try to shut me up, even in Lagos. Well, but that yeah. which is not a village. Then, then they, maybe they came with village mentality. We have to go now. Thank you so much for your time right. on, on the program this morning. Thank you so um, much. But well, this is another starter conversation. I, but I think the most important thing, that the point that has been made here today, is to stop categorizing children into dockets. Yeah. Um, male child, female child, yeah. and all of that. Child is child. Child is child. Yes. At birth, child is child. And everything else follows from there. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Amina Yusu, Yunus, Yunus. Amina Yunus Ali is a lead coach, Timeless Soul Incorporated. Thank you again for your time. Thank you very much. Just before we take the final home, home stretch, stretch, let's take the wrap.